Hi, this is Brian Lazar with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center and welcome to your weekly Avalanche Outlook. I want to start by taking a quick look backwards at last week. You can see here on our Avalanche Explorer tool that with all of that storm snow that came in last week, we had uh, over 700 avalanches that we recorded in the last week, largely due to all of that storm snow landing on very weak snow surfaces. You can see that the avalanche activity was um, pretty much statewide across most of the mountains. Um, the larger activity and the more avalanches ran in areas that got more snow. So that's in the central mountains here and then down in portions of the San Juan mountains. So I wanna show you some images of the kinds of avalanches that we've seen over the last week and how this has transitioned into this uh, mix of avalanche varieties that we're dealing with on Thursday and as we move into Friday. So here are some very large avalanches that broke on those colder slopes on the weak layers underneath the storm snow. So you can see here's one down on the battleship close to Silverton, Colorado. We had some really impressive activity along the Highway 550 corridor. As you can see, we had remotely triggered avalanches just in the last couple of days uh, right near Crested Butte. Um, we still have dry slab avalanches that are breaking. Um, this one is again near Crested Butte. We had large avalanches run in the Aspen zone. Uh, this is near Marble. And this one's in Red Lady Bowl, just outside of Crested Butte. And now we are transitioning into these types of avalanches where we're seeing enough sunshine, enough warm temperatures that we're seeing wet, loose activity and even some wet slab avalanches that are breaking loose on southerly facing slopes um, at mostly near and below tree line but you can expect to see a little bit of this activity even on easterly and westerly facing slopes. So on Thursday, we sit at moderate avalanche danger across all forecast zones across the state. Um, keep in mind that every danger rating covers a range or a spectrum of conditions. We are in moderate danger, which is level two of five. We're likely to sit at moderate danger um, for Thursday and into Friday. We are in a tricky transitional period with a lot of very warm temperatures and that is producing um, a mix of different avalanches. So on those colder northerly slopes, we're still dealing with dry slab avalanches that are breaking on the weak layers that were buried by the storm from last week. And on sunnier slopes and lower elevation slopes, things are getting warm enough that we are now seeing an increase in wet avalanche activity. And here's a really nice video, which really kind of illustrates the problem of the recent storm snow breaking on those persistent weak layers. They're anywhere from one to three or four feet deep, depending on how much snow you got. This one is uh, near the Aspen area from just several days ago. Oh, heads up, heads up, heads up. Move, 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 move. Good work. So Thursday is going to be kind of our last day of these tricky transitional periods because it's our last day of really warm and sunny weather. That kind of comes to an end on Friday with the arrival of cold air and some snow. So you can see that snowfall starts to uh, accumulate in the state around Friday. That's not going to be enough to increase the avalanche hazard. Um, but we're going to continue to see small amounts of incremental loading as we move through the weekend. We can see anywhere from eight to 16 inches of snow accumulation by the time we get into midday on Sunday. That might be enough snow to start um, putting uh, avalanches in the storm snow back on our radar. Uh, the areas that look like they might get the most are down in the San Juans and we could start to see enough accumulation to have wind slab avalanches return onto our radar. We may hit level three or considerable danger by uh, Sunday afternoon. Again, um, as we stack up the snow, avalanches are going to gradually and very slowly become a little bit easier and more likely to trigger. We're still going to be able to trigger avalanches from below, and we're still going to be able to trigger avalanches from a distance. So as we get towards the latter half of the weekend and into early next week, it's time that we start paying attention to what the load is doing to those buried persistent weak layers. It's important during these very tricky and transitional times, you stay up to date on changing conditions. So please get your avalanche forecast at colorado.gov avalanche or on the CAIC mobile app before heading out into the backcountry. If you're out there, please let us know what you're seeing. Please stay safe and we'll see you here next week.